I feel like you ask me all these super simple questions that I should have like a really easy, quick answer to, and I just go on these frickin' rants. I'm Richard Ryan, I'm one of the co-founders of Black Rifle Coffee, and this is 11 questions and a cup of coffee. Uh, it kinda depends, I just started doing massive batches of cold brew because I'm kind of like on the go all the time and really don't drink a whole lot of hot coffee. It's usually iced uh, and I prefer cold brew. So I'll take and I'll, I'll ground up like four pounds of coffee of whole bean, put it in the uh, cold brew to steep overnight and then I've got three and a half gallons ready to go for about a week, week and a half. Um, depends on the time of the year, but uh, most of the time uh, I'm, I'm drinking sugar with a splash of coffee. Um, what's the most? <laughs> I'm gonna go with it. Uh, you, you know what's funny is for me, it's not about those, those extreme moments don't stand out because I feel like a lot of the stuff that we do is kind of outliers. <laughs> For me, it's those moments where you really, really appreciate that cup of coffee. It's, 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 you know, three degrees below zero or something like that. You're soaking wet, you're out in the middle of the woods. I remember a few, few instances where we were up on the mountain, either filming or hunting, and those are like some of the best cups of coffee ever. Like you really, really appreciate like uh, every, every ounce of heat coming from that cup and the taste and everything's just epic. Or when it's, you know, uh, 105 degrees here in San Antonio and it's early in the morning and I've got that super ice cold cup of cold brew. I, it's just, there's nothing better. Math. I hated it. I hated being forced to learn it. I remember the day I was sitting in, in class and I was doing some type of some type of formula and I was like, this is this is not me. This is this is the like and I dropped out of college that day. I was like, this is not I'm not not gonna do this. And the irony is like you come full circle like seven or eight years later and I'm using all these formulas to figure out, ballistic formulas to like track a, a freaking bullet at the same velocity as a uh, deck cord propagating to impact target at the exact same time and figuring all this stuff out. And it's like, I was so excited to use the math and learn it there. It's just the whole application of it. So I'd, I'd say that was one of like those days where I'm sure like, Everyone out there is like, oh, that's fucking to total first world problems. <laughs> but I mean, I, I feel fortunate enough that, but I, that's one of those days that kind of stands out off the top of my head. I mean, whenever you're a kid, there's a million and one days where you're like, this is the worst day ever. You know, I got to do this test or whatever. But like now I feel like life in general is like, you, you, you get older, you mature and you, you roll with the punches and you're like, well, hopefully most people do, but you learn to let, not to sweat the small stuff, I guess you could say, like really appreciate the, the growth. <laughs> Prior psychological like trauma, <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's elements to your past that play into your behavior now, right? There's the, the psychological play, the psychologist now. Uh, but for me, I feel like there's a lot of surface level things that drive people, but be it business, content, be it marketing, whatever. There's so many, there's, there's so much competition now with the internet uh, that I feel like, like really appreciating and enjoying what we do actually kind of drives us. It's like the, the, the perpetual motion in the machine or the fuel to the fire is that we genuinely enjoy this stuff. Like, I mean, some people getting up and going and jumping on an airplane may be like terrifying for them, but it's like, oh wow, I get to do this. It's like, like I was joking with with one of my friends here a while back about this, and he was like, he's like, you're you're like constantly terrified about like, be it finances or this or that. And I was like, yeah, honestly, the the, the reason for that is because. I've gotten to a point over the last 10, 15 years to be able to do stuff that I never thought that I'd be able to be paid to do or monetize that process. And it's like, 
I, I'm, I'm constantly waiting for somebody to pull the rug out and say, wait, you're having fun and you're actually like making a living doing that? No, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that because you got to be in this, you got to be in the cubicle, you got to be in the nine to five, you got to, you got to hate, you got to hate what you do during the week so you can enjoy the weekend. You can't enjoy all of it. And I, I think that like just this, the opportunities and all the new stuff and the experiences that are constantly coming to the table, I get to grow. Uh, with those experiences and that's that's super invaluable and it keeps me humble and motivated to keep doing all this that it's it's funny because a lot of people a lot of people will ask what do you do like I don't, I don't understand like how do you make a living because okay so you're in movies or you're a coffee guy or you're a marketer or what like you're hosting like what what is it that you do all yes all of it like it's 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 a weird point in time where there there are people who can be specialists in their in industries but uh, to really pay dividends down the road like I think it behooves the average person to understand all aspects of business and industries uh, Stuff like that, where it's like, okay, you have a fundamental understanding of what works on social media, but how do you monetize that? Like, how do you, and then once you figure out how to monetize that, how do you develop a product that's gonna, you know, resonate with that, that demographic? So it's full spectrum, like the entertainment industry side of it, um, just programming and, and verticals, like, like basic optimization of content. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's so funny, like I, one day I could be editing, another I could be on a show, um, you know, we could be working on a movie. There's a million and one things. I, honestly, time management's the, the biggest struggle in trying to figure out what, what, what's providing most value to myself, my partners, and the team. Well, I mean, I hate, to, I hate to take quotes from other people that I can't attribute it to, but it's meaningful work and meaningful relationships. I mean, the rest is just kind of like uh, financial success or whatever that, that typical people measure um, success off of is that, that number or whatever, but I think it comes once you find meaningful work and meaningful relationships to kind of exploit like the, like, who, I forget, like I'm, I'm the worst now because it was like, um, oh, algorithms to live by, right? So it's like, it's a, where you, you, in your younger days, you're in the experimentation um, point of your life. And then in your, you transition into the exploitation point in your life. So if you go to, if you go to uh, a restaurant or something like that, you're just experimenting with like all the different random ones. I know I'm just ah. rambling on now, but like when you get older, you're like, I want to go there because I know that's the meal I'm going to get. So for me, it's like having those those meaningful relationships that I can just like, okay, I've done the social butterfly thing early on. It's just like I want to spend time with the ones I care about, uh, maybe meet new people along the way, maybe make a difference and enjoy the work that we do. Can I get both? Can I have like a mountain overlooking the ocean? Cause I mean, like, I love that. I love that you get like the Pacific Northwest and you get some of those big mountains like facing the ocean and everything. Even whenever I was in Los Angeles, like I go out to Big Bear and uh, we had this one ridge line where I'd film a lot and you could see Santa Monica from it and everything. So it's like, I, I, I like that. That's kind of like the best of both worlds where it's like, you get up in the mountains, you get that breath of fresh air, you get the conifers and you just smell all the pine and everything up there. and then. You can still see the ocean go down there, take a nap by the beach or whatever. I love it. I feel like, I feel like I would struggle between time travel and immortality because I feel like, I feel like being mortal gives you a sense of meaning and purpose that uh, immortality can't really provide. Time travel is interesting because you could potentially find solutions to problems going back and forth and experience different points in time. Um, yeah, I, w I think time travel would be dope. What is something pretty boring? I actually, I think that's it. I think that's it. Like, I think most people see the stuff that I've done or I do and they think it's like, Dude, just blowing stuff up and like, you know, filming epic things or doing this or doing that or hanging out with so-and-so. And honestly, I am like, so boring, so boring. 
I love just chilling at home in the AC. <laughs> just chilling. <laughs> yeah. I would say a seven or an eight because I don't want that responsibility of being a ruler of a new world. I don't want that. But I think everybody, at least in our inner group, is just, come on, zombie apocalypse, come on. <laughs> I mean, we've got so much stuff just like lined up, like between explosives and firearms. We're just like, we're itching for a zombie apocalypse. Just itching for one. So well over a five, but I, I wouldn't want to rule anything.